In this screencast for uh, chapter 11 on synthesis in Klein's third edition of organic chemistry, we're going to look at uh, what's basically known as a starburst uh, type problem, where we're taking a common functional group, uh, this being this alkene that's embedded in this one methyl cyclohexene compound. And as you can see, um, we're going to treat it with a, a variety of different reagents to affect different transformations. So for example, um, we're going to take the alkene um, and add HBr across the double bond in two different ways. Uh, we'll do oxidative cleavage to end up with carbonyls, um, dihydroxylation reactions, uh, halohydrin, um, dihalide reactions, hydrogenation, and then hydration two different ways. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll start off with um, the synthesis of that central compound starting from methyl cyclohexane to the left here. So as you can see uh, in the first transformation, um, I'm gonna draw this hydrogen in and then what's happening is this tertiary hydrogen is being substituted for bromine. So when we recall from 255 chemistry, this would be um, a radical substitution so radical CH substitution. And the conditions, we obviously need bromine for that. And then we'll use um, either light or heat um, to initiate um, the radical chain mechanism. So I, I think it's a good practice when you're reviewing uh, organic chemistry one um, to, to write things down in words like this and then um, identify reaction conditions. So there's a couple different layers of, of learning here. So uh, once we have this tertiary bromide, we can see that um, in the next reaction, we're doing an elimination of HBr across these two carbons. So that's... Um, the E2 mechanism, and we want to use um, a, a base to do that. So uh, we don't want to use a bulky base because we won't get the correct, um, say, regioselectivity. So we'll go ahead and use sodium ethoxide, and then we'll use ethanol as the solvent. So again, that's going to be an E2 mechanism. This is deprotonated. We're, we're doing an elimination, so we form the pi bond here, and then bromide leaves and then we arrive at our alkene. And then we'll just go in a clockwise fashion around the starburst here. So the, the first two, let's, let's just talk about them together, these two um, products. The, the first one here is a, a secondary bromide, and the next one is a tertiary bromide. And let's go ahead and, and draw in the implicit hydrogen that's not shown so we can see about this concept of um, regioselectivity and what that means is how the elements of HBr, HBr, HBr are added to those two carbons. So here we're getting the least substituted bromide and then here we're getting the most substituted bromide. So this this one is more straightforward I think. It, it follows the Markovnikov addition. That's just simply the addition of HBr across that alkene. So we add hydrogen to this carbon, that generates a tertiary carbocation, the bromide anion will then attack to get the tertiary. So if you recall, a complementary or orthogonal method to add HBr um, would be the radical addition. So let me just make this note here. So we'll just say Markovnikov. addition. And so for the secondary one, this would be considered an anti-Markovnikov addition. So we're still going to use HBr, but obviously we can't just use HBr alone. We have to use some other reagent in there to affect or change the reactivity. So one reagent we can use is tert butyl peroxide. So essentially what 
these conditions do, um, what we're gonna we're gonna cleave this central peroxide bond to generate a peroxy radical that abstracts this hydrogen and then generates a bromine radical. The bromine radical then adds here, then it generates a tertiary radical, which can abstract another hydrogen from second equivalent of this, thereby um, initiating the chain. So um, this is important to uh, know the mechanisms of how these things happen, why, why you get the HBr adding in different ways. So if we look at uh, this next series of reactions, um, essentially we're doing um, adding heteroatoms uh, to, to both carbons. So this first one here, obviously the ring has opened up. We've cleaved across the two sp2 hybridized carbons. So this is an oxidative cleavage. And the conditions we're going to want to use for that are ozone gas and our halogen solvent. And then most importantly as well, we're going to use a reductive workup with dimethyl sulfide because we don't want this carbon any, uh, oxidized further to the acid. Since it's at the aldehyde oxidation state, we want to leave it there. So we have to use that in the workup. So this is uh, ozonolysis or oxidative cleavage. The next one, as we can see, um, we're, we're adding the elements of OH to each carbon. And more importantly as well, notice the relationship of those two. It's, it's a syn addition. So this is a, a dihydroxylation reaction. So if you remember, we can use uh, osmium uh, tetroxide uh, to do this, and then we need a reoxidant, which is typically N-methylmorpholine and oxide. So that compound allows, allows us to use a catalytic amount of the osmium tetroxide, basically, because uh, osmium itself is, is toxic. So notice in the next compound, oh, and the, the EN means the enantiomer, so basically you can either get addition of the osmium from the top face or the bottom face, so you get both enantiomers. This next compound here is a diastereomer of this, diastereomer being at this position here, the tertiary alcohol position. Notice the configurations are swapped. So this would be an anti-dihydroxylation, and a, a way we could do that is in, in two steps. So step number one, we would treat with MCPBA, and then again, that would generate an epoxide. And then step number two, we would treat with dilute acid and water, and then that would open up the epoxide in an anti-fashion uh, to get you the desired relationship between the two alcohol groups. The next reaction you see we're adding bromine and OH, so this is a halohydrin. And so for that, we're going to use uh, molecular bromine, Br2, in the presence of water, so a participating solvent. So if we compare that to this reaction here, we're adding bromine in an anti-fashion, plus we get the enantiomer. So we're going to use the same conditions as above, except instead of using water, we're going to use a non um, participating solvent such as um, dichloromethane. So again, the distinction here is the solvent. Water is nucleophilic because the oxygens have lone pairs that can attack. Dichloromethane is non-nucleophilic. It's uh, polar aprotic and it does not get incorporated into the product. This next reaction, uh, if we look, we have one, two degrees of unsaturation. We have a ring and a pi bond. Here we only have the ring, so we're doing a reduction, uh, specifically a hydrogenation. We're adding the elements of H2 across the pi bond, and we would typically use a transition metal, palladium on carbon, and a, a polar uh, protic solvent to accomplish that.
So if you look at this, um, this product is essentially what we started with over here. So our next uh, reaction, um, so th this, um, you definitely want to draw in that uh, implicit hydrogen. So just go ahead and draw it in like that. So the reason that's important is because now you can see that it's basically a syn addition of, of water across that um, pi bond. And basically it's, it's an anti-Markovnikov reaction. So um, as, we, as we saw up here in this, this step, see how the hydrogen adds to the, the tertiary position there, adds to the tertiary position there. So this is an example of hydroboration oxidation. So we would use borane. And then the little dot means it's a THF complex that helps um, basically uh, for the, the person handling it to, to measure it easier. So that's sort of stage one. And then you stage two, you add sodium hydroxide hydrogen peroxide and water. And so that transforms the, the, the boron that's there into the hydroxyl group. So hydroboration oxidation is an anti-Markovnikov process. And then for this last final reaction, we can see that this is a Markovnikov hydration. So this would be just simply the addition of um, water and then some concentrated acid and a catalytic amount so again, the mechanism of that, hydrogen adds here, tertiary carbocation water attacks, that's how we get this relationship. So this has been um, a review of alkene chemistry uh, for the synthesis chapter in Klein's third edition of organic chemistry uh, as a review uh, for moving forward in organic chemistry too.